Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little different um, compared to the other things that we've been doing um, already on the channel. So this particular computer is an IBM 300PL uh, personal computer. Now I was getting ready to do a video on this computer because uh, it's a Pentium 3 computer from the uh, late 90s and I was working on setting up a video to show um, just just the computer itself. And I noticed uh, as I started firing it up to get ready for the actual video that it, it just it wasn't consistently behaving uh, properly. It wasn't it was booting um, and then it would complain about the clock battery uh, of which I replaced. Um, it was coming up and saying that there's an intrusion alarm that um, the system's been halted, etc. Doing weird things that I just wasn't able to um, to surpass after a couple hours of troubleshooting. So then, after a bunch of research, I had uh, realized that after looking into the board quite a bit that um, I have a couple of bad capacitors on the actual motherboard itself, and I was able to link it back that the behavior of the motherboard was due to some of these caps um, just being bad on the board. And so I, I'm not familiar with uh, this particular machine in general outside of just having uh, visual damage to the caps. Um, so I figured we would do a repair video um, to show the actual teardown of this PC, the replacement, the removal and the replacement of the, um, the bad capacitors, and then uh, putting everything back together just for something fun. And so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and do that in a moment. Um, the actual capacitors themselves, unfortunately I wasn't able to get anything on Amazon um, or anything locally, uh, which actually surprised me that I wasn't able to get it from one of our local shops here um, who who um, uh, everyone referred me to and they didn't have stock. So um, I was able to go to DigiKey um, and I was able to get the capacitors I needed with the proper, um, resistance, uh, capacitance, sorry, as well as the, uh, the voltage required. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take this machine apart. I've never taken one of these apart before. I'm going to be completely honest. So we're on a journey together uh, um, in this video. And I, I just thought it'd be fun to do uh, something different uh, on the video, uh, or sorry, on the channel. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the cover off. Uh, IBM uh, makes it quite simple to get into their PCs. And this is literally just two little clips in the back that allow you to get into the, the computer itself. Now, I'm just going to put that aside um, out of the way. And so here we are. We have the uh, inside of the, of the PC here. So the, the computer itself is a Pentium 3 computer. Um, outside of the, being a Pentium 3, I don't have a lot of other details um, um, for you at, at the moment. So we're going to explore this together. So we're going to do a complete teardown because the way this computer is built, because it's a desktop form factor versus a tower that you're probably used to uh, seeing, you know, if it was vertical, um, it has a different layout so that uh, it has a motherboard on the bottom of the actual computer itself. And it also has, um, um, it has a riser board right here that comes off of the motherboard itself. And uh, sorry about the camera angle, everybody. I'm going to turn that around just so you can see. Um, so this ray, this motherboard itself is right here, and the riser board is plugged into the motherboard. And this is what gives you your expansion slots um, that you would see the ports on the back of your computer. So, um, yeah. Um, so I was able to, after doing some digging around on the board, now I had done an initial job uh, looking through the motherboard, and I wasn't able to see any bad caps or capacitors on the board. There was nothing leaking. There was nothing uh, damage that I could see. Um, and there was nothing on the actual, uh, anything that I could see uh, it, to indicate that there was a problem with the capacitor. Now, <laughs> that said, um, I dug a little deeper underneath the floppy drive and the cabling here to locate the uh, CMOS battery or the clock battery. And that's where I noticed um, one of the caps that had started to um, uh, deform. Uh, so capacitors over time, um, the the material that's inside of the capacitor itself can go bad. Um, and, and it's funny is that I had this computer running a few years ago um, uh, without have, doing anything inside the computer. Just turned it on, installed Windows 98 on it, installed a bunch of software, did some testing on it. 
Um, and I actually have had uploaded a previous video years ago, uh, not on this channel, but uh, on my um, social media, just bringing back the past. So uh, maybe that was the groundwork for, uh, for what uh, we have today. So without uh, any more additional, uh, you know, going on here, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, take apart piece by piece uh, this particular system. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do it together. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to take out the video card first. The video card is located right here. And I'm just going to get uh, my screwdriver here and we'll be able to take that, uh, take that out. So the, um, one of the things that IBM has uh, is uh, they use flathead uh, screwdrivers in, or sorry, screws in their um, systems, which of course is, uh, you know, not the standard today. Uh, we have um, Phillips um, head and sometimes you have twist off uh, that have a, um, a knob on the top that you're able to, to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that screw out and then we're gonna lift the video card out. Remember, none of this has been done yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out here. Slowly but surely. There's a bracket in the way here, so I'm just getting that out. They don't want me getting this out, that's for sure. So the actual um, video card itself is a, an AGP video card. So this computer here has AGP graphics and it's quite proprietary to this uh, particular case. So you can see how um, it, it's just a singular slot uh, for the expansion at the back, but it's, it doesn't have your standard um, bracket that you'd have on the back of a back of, sorry, there we go, back of an expansion card. So uh, that's what was hooking up on the system. And I actually, in hindsight, I could have, Taking apart the um, the stand or standoffs here that are on the holding the port together here, the bracket to the port, and I could have removed it. But uh, but yeah, no, the card itself uh, looks good uh, for what it is. It's um, let's just see what type of card it is. It does not say just offhand, and other than as being AGP, and we'll go ahead and uh, dig in deeper as um, as we go through. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside. And so we have the video card out of the computer. Now we're going to take the memory out. So this is the uh, memory of the PC. Now I have um, um, two, uh, what's, what do we have in here? 264 megabyte sticks. And I believe uh, one, oh, actually, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't remember what I have left and put in here. A 128 meg. So we have um, 100 and then, Let's see, 120, 256 megs of RAM in here. And so this is what's referred to as RAM. If you hear someone say, how much RAM does your computer have? And this, these are the memory sticks. Now, mind you, these are SD memory sticks, um, SD RAM, a um, little older uh, for the time of the era of this PC. So again, just, um, just taking those out. So now this is the processor I'm going to take out next. This is a Pentium 3 processor. I believe it's a Pentium 3. Let's just see here. I think it's a 500. We'll know when we take it out here. I'm going to be very careful because these tabs on the end that hold the processor to the board, um, over time, <laughs> they get weak. And uh, I just recently watched a video, actually, where um, they had went to take it out and unfortunately had snapped off the side. I'm hoping not to do that today because, um, again, oh, there we go. One side's released. We'll do that as well on this side. There we go. Okay. So we have the uh, Pentium processor removed. A little dirty here. I'm just going to brush that off. Now, these brushes, now generally you wouldn't use brushes on, on any electrical components, but these are called electrostatic discharge or ESD uh, brushes that are specifically meant for, for doing this. So there we are. Oh, beautiful Pentium 3. I'm just determining what it is. It's a Pentium 3. It says 600 on this. So that's what I believe it is. Um, but again, we'll put that aside, uh, get ready for when we need it to put it back in the machine. So we we're actually able to get the uh, get the uh, processor out relatively easily, and there's zero damage to the uh, to the standoffs here or to the to the connectors. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just remove this cabling. 
on the back of the floppy drive. And we'll take the floppy drive out next, just because it's uh, next in line here. Okay. Right, we have that, and we'll, I'll just slide right out there. So nothing fancy. It has a custom bracket around for this particular case. Now, I'm not going to take the bracket off. There's no point in doing that at the moment, but uh, we have that out. And all right, so we have that out of the board. So I'm just going to take, um, by looks of things, off the riser board that we have here, the floppy cable um, is plugged in um, just like that. There we go. Very short floppy cable, um, but it, again, serves a purpose for this particular case. This case is very proprietary, <laughs> proprietary for everything that we we have. Um, so everything's gonna be a little custom as we go. Um, I've taken apart many, many a computer over the years. Um, but again, because this is so custom um, to IBM that uh, we're on this journey together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect this cable here. This, ca this cable here uh, is going from the riser board, uh, again, which is connected to the motherboard to the front panel. Now, in the front panel, it goes into this little this little device, this, which is bracketed on there or velcroed on. Now it says it's an RFID um, uh, uh, device. Now that's what was giving me the problem. So for whatever reason, um, the capacitors that are near underneath underneath this uh, area of the board, which we're going to zoom in here in a moment, um, was telling me that. It couldn't find the RFID, then it would come up and say it could find it, no problem, and it was working fine. Um, cleared the CMOS, replaced the battery, uh, did various things to it, and it came up and, and said a whole bunch of different uh, errors. Uh, that There's, like I said, an intrusion to the PC or to the computer um, and uh, a whole bunch of other things, which, which of course, yes, there's an intrusion. I own the PC. <laughs> Naturally, I'm going to go in it. But um, I tried putting the case back on. Um, someone had uh, read in the com or some something I'd read is that there's a photo cell to show light, so naturally you had to close it and things like that. But none of that worked. There was nothing that I was doing that would um, that unfor for unfortunately were going to uh, to help me there. So yeah, needless to say, we didn't uh, we didn't continue with that. So um, I'm looking at the. I'm just giving a getting an idea of what's going on in here, um, just because I'm wondering if I have to remove this bracket that the actual riser board um, sits on. And I'm just trying to de determine that here uh, just because of the, uh, seeing how far we actually have to go um, with regards to doing this. I think we're just going to have to take the motherboard out. A couple of wires I have to disconnect, but I, I think we're just going to have to take the motherboard out there's a couple of little plastic standoffs that are holding the motherboard in place. And on the riser board itself, there's a screw holding it in place. And I believe at that point, the whole thing can kind of come out and shift out without me having to take apart all the rest of the assembly. Um, so that's a, that's good news there anyway. And so, oh, I wanted to show you. Um, so I'll see what I can do to show you here. So the capacitors that we're going to be replacing are right here on the motherboard. And so you can... Let's see if we can get the light in there as well. One second here. And uh, everybody can see. It's just hard with the equipment that I have at the moment to zoom in on that. So it's actually right here is where, where it is and um, on the board. There's three, three guys that are sitting right there. And so we're going to be replacing um, those specific three right, right on the board there, which is right next to the CMOS battery, which supposedly is causing my grief. So, all right, I'm going to take that off now and be all set. All right, so I'm going to take off this um, riser board. If you want to see here, we just have the, it looks like the hard drive IDE cable, which is right there, which I've taken out, um, which I, sorry, I'm unhooked there. And I'm just going to leave it where it is. I'm going to take apart this screw here. It's the only screw that I'm seeing on this riser board that could potentially be holding it in. Now, I mean, I've been surprised before. I'm sure that um, so there's something else in here that, that's holding it in, but that's all I'm seeing at the moment. And we'll just be very careful as we do things. You know, I, as growing up, I was always told if you have to force it, um, you're doing it wrong. So um, again, I 
I believe in that for most of the time. Um, other times I believe you have, you have to uh, force it because um, you have no other choice. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this off here. And it's not cooperating. It's, there's that force conversation that we just had. Let's see if I have another screwdriver that will. There we go. Okay. There we go. I'm able to get that off now. There we go. Put that here. Now, I just electro electrostatically discharge myself by touching the case. I'm constantly touching the case. It's not plugged in. I'm on hardwood floor. I'm not touching any carpet, things like that. Everything I have on my desk here um, is rated ESD as well. Um, so I, I do those things. So you're not providing any sort of current or shock or static from your body to uh, two of these, just as an FYI. All right. So I've gone ahead and taken that board off of that bracket. And there's a power connector here as well. So I'm just going to remove that power connector. Just getting down to the ground level of the, the board here. Yeah, see, it's, it's looking good there. It's looking good like it's it wants to move. Let's take a look at the rest of the, the parts here. Okay, there we go. Took that out. And, uh, you never work on a case without getting at least one or two cuts. So courtesy of the IBM case, it gives you a nice memory of what, what it's doing. I think what we just need to do is go ahead and I'm just looking for the other areas just to see if there's anything else holding this down. So there's one there for sure. There's two there for sure. There's two. Okay. I'm probably going to end up having to replace them. And I do have others. Um, just because the plastic is so brittle that I'm, I'm worried that if I start to mess with that, that it's going to slow in here as well. Uh, going to cause me some grief. Now let's see what I have here. Now, this is not the proper tool for this. This is a chip extractor, but I'm going to see if I can squeeze that. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. I may have to get some pliers. So I have them all out now, and you can clearly see the flexibility in the board now, which is, which is really good news. Um... I do have the ATX power supply in the back here. So I'm going to go ahead and just open and close that off as well. There we go. Now, I believe what's holding it in place now are those standoffs. So I just noticed when I was looking over the, before I was going to go and get a pliers, I noticed that this end piece comes off and that there seems to be a um, quick release on the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and See we take this off. There we go. The case, and it gives me access to the motherboard. And I see this little black black bracket. So I'm just pulling that out. See if that's going to give what we need. So, through the magic of editing, I was able to determine um, that the the actual riser board does not need to come out of the system. The I thought the whole thing came out as a piece, like the riser board along with the motherboard. And uh, in this particular case, it's not the case. So I put everything back uh, off camera. I was able to put everything, uh, connect everything back, realign everything. Uh, it's secure where it should be. And so after noticing that this end piece came off, there's this latch system that ejects the motherboard away from the rest of the chassis. So I'm able to take all this whole motherboard, slide it right out just like that. So you can see now we have the complete IBM motherboard that's out of the system. So here is where I was referring to as the bad caps. You can see that the cap itself is not completely, uh, let's see if I can get a good image of this here on camera. So the cap itself, which is right here is is um, bulging a bit right there on top of the cap. And um, the other one next to it seems a little ri um, raised as well. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those uh, from the board. And um, while I'm at it, I am gonna clean up the board uh, a bit as well. I'm gonna dust it off um, because again, there's 
quite a bit of um, quite a bit of gunk um, on the board. And so the other thing I did was this was the this was the um, IO shield that I was referring to earlier. And off camera, I put all the screws back in just because um, we didn't need uh, we didn't need to take that out. And ideally, based on what I see here now, um, is that these standoffs are attached to these rails. And so these rails are on the back of the motherboard is what slides in uh, into the actual chassis down below. And then ultimately the board will slide back into that connector on the riser board, feeding the, um, the rest of the system. So yeah, um, without uh, going any further, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, prepare the desoldering station so that we can get, um, we can go ahead and remove those, uh, those bad caps that we have right here. We're gonna go ahead and just um, uh, desolder those from the board. So we're all set up now to start uh, working on removing the three uh, bad capacitors on the um, on the IBM motherboard. So again, um, I have a silicone mat here, uh, which is high resistance to heat, uh, designed specifically for the uh, for this application. I also have um, here as well. Um, I have uh, the soldering station that I have here, as well as a Hako um, desoldering uh, tool as well. Um, again, I haven't calibrated it uh, in a while, so uh, might be some trial and error getting that um, getting that uh, done. So that's it. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, before we go to remove the solder um, from the board, um, these are the three capacitors right here, um, so I can see clearly see where they are on on the board, but what I want to do is I want to add a little fresh solder to it. I mean, this solder is old. I mean, the system is from the late nineties. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some fresh solder um, to the, to the actual board itself. Um, it's, it's definitely easier to remove solder that when it's fresh and this will mix uh, with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add some heat here and add some fresh solder to the, each one of the, um, there we go. Each one of the pins of the, the leads of the actual capacitor that's there, and then that'll um, allow us to. Uh, there we go. It's fine. It's easier to remove solder if you've had fresh stuff to it. Okay. So I've gone ahead and added uh, fresh solder to the um, to those pins, and then we'll work on removing removing that as well. So that that's the three capacitors in the bottom. Let's double check, triple check. Yes, absolutely, there. And we'll work on um, releasing them from the uh, from the board. Of course, the pins are a little bit bent, so I'm just working on finding the right angle to take them out, and we can remove them. The key is not to leave it too uh, on the board too long. You don't want to do any damage to the motherboard as well. But you can clearly see um, the uh, the solder when it starts to melt, and then. You you can remove it. Almost being a little more stubborn. Just to heat accordingly here. All right, so I'm going to, um, there's a couple here that never, unfortunately never came apart. I see this one here is pretty good. This capacitor um, looks like it's mostly already removed. I'm going to go ahead and um, just uh, bend that pin slightly forward on the capacitor itself without scratching any of the traces on the motherboard. And there we go. The, the intention here is just to get to that again and make sure we haven't done any damage to the actual trace itself. Nope, that looks good. Okay. And there we are. So you can see the capacitor came right out there. And 
yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy to think, um, um, just crazy to think that, uh, that these, you can start to see, you can see, start to definitely see the bulge that, uh, that these can cause so much, so much difficulty for the board. Okay. That's one gone. And everything looks good underneath. And I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to bend the pins, um, slightly forward, um, just to make sure that we're good. So that one's already released. And the other thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add a little more solder again to those, to that area because I'm, again, just the solder sold and, uh, it should release fairly quickly um, when you have some setup like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove that as well. Add fresh solder that as well. There we go. I'll do the same thing where the where I've already worked on. Just uh, so I'm already here. There we go. Okay. And we'll let that uh, let that set for a second, and then we'll we'll start that process over again. And uh, hopefully remove that last piece there. Now, one thing to notice is that um, the polarity of the um, of the caps. So where the, the the line goes down here, you'll see line strip here. That's their negative lead, which is your shorter of the two leads. And um, yeah, so what we're going to do is make sure that we don't um, cross it. Otherwise, you'll have explosions, and we don't want to do that uh, today. And uh, on this board, the uh, leads are, are already on this side facing the card edge. Um, and so that's what we'll do. We'll just end up doing the same thing. Uh, let me go do it. Okay, let's uh, do this. There we go. It's looking a lot better now. Okay, let's see if we can wiggle that out. There we are. And the nice thing about this, I used to uh, just do all this with a soldering gun. Um, and then I went out and purchased this beautiful piece of equipment. And I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference in what you're trying to do. But uh, this is the worst of the, of the capacitors. You can probably see on the camera there the how close. Oh, sorry, let's just see if we can focus. Um, there we go. You can see the staining on top of that. And it's critical to... Have good caps. Now, not all bad, not all caps will go bad like this. I mean, you'll have, you'll have these caps and they'll still function. Um, but unfortunately in this case, we don't have that, uh, I don't have that, uh, fortunate. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, put the cap over here and we'll continue on to, uh, to remove the remaining solder from those, um, from those leads. There we are. We have them out. Okay. So one of the things that I do, um, now not everyone does this, but this is something that I like to do, is uh, do a little bit of cleanup on the board um, after you've um, after you've done that. And I do that with um, I do that with isopropyl alcohol um, just to clean up any sort of um, solder resin or anything that's that's on there. So let's go ahead and all it is it's it's ninety nine point nine or sorry ninety nine percent um, isopropyl alcohol. Now, if you see my other videos, um, um, I, I've referenced um, cleaning up the ink cartridge on the HP ink cartridge. So I just give it, give it a nice little clean here. Um, and you can see that it, as a result, the nice thing about this percentage is that it um, it dissipates fairly quickly. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just do that. And just take a look and see right through no problem and it doesn't look like there's any damage to any part of the board which is which is exactly what we want and also it just it just cleans up the area for you know when i install the new stuff that a connectivity now here are the three caps you can see i'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the on the board here just to make sure that it's uh clean now i had indicated that this was negative um uh, on the cap remember i had said that that strip that you see there's the negative and it matches of course this as well um the board is actually labeled the board is actually labeled here um i'm missing all my my stuff here i'm moving some stuff around so you see here it actually has a plus symbol on the actual motherboard itself so that's good news i mean if i for some reason forgot 
um, I could look at this and uh, feel good uh, and confident that that's uh, what I'm going to do here. Now, I mean, some people say, well, what are you doing? You already have the board out. Why don't you recap the rest of the board? Um, and uh, I mean, I'm a mixed of uh, feelings of that, mixed opinions. Um, I've done a bit of research on, you know, should you cap for the sake of recapping? Um, now that I know how to take this apart, um, it's fairly simple. So I, I don't think I'm going to do that today. I think for what we're trying to accomplish today, this is fine. Okay, um, here's our caps. We're going to go ahead and open them up and uh, yeah, pull that aside, and we'll be able to to um, yeah to do this. So this is the the brand new caps. These are 560 microfarad. Um, you'll see that in the um, in there. So let me just go here and uh, do a little bit of a zoom here. So you'll see they're 560 microfarad, 25 volt caps, and that's exactly what uh, the old ones were rated for. And so you'll see that here as well. Um, there you go, in the 560 um, and 25 volt. Now uh, it's funny because I had it was quite quite difficult to get an image. Of what that was like when I needed it, so um, um, I'm glad I was able to to get that um, and be correct. So on these um, on these particular um, capacitors, the shorter leg is the negative leg, and the longer leg is the positive leg. So very important we uh, we we note that. So I'm just going to put the first one in, and so the long one's the positive, short one's the negative, and I had said earlier. The negative is the uh, is um, against the card edge, which is here, um, against the actual um, connector. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, just move them aside like that, just to hold it in place. And yeah, so just for just to make sure you know for looks and stuff like that, we'll make sure it's all in there. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of solder uh, to that to that uh, those pins. And I mean, some people put all three at once and things like that. I mean fine to do whatever method you want this is just what i'm doing today <laughs> it just works and uh we're being very methodical how we're doing this we're not in any rush uh, for the sake of what we're trying to do here so go ahead and um, put this down so it's a better surface and uh, we'll go here and a little bit of solder i mean like i said just enough that it you know you, you can have too much too <laughs> um but i just want to make sure that we have enough that it's not, you know, no question about it going anywhere. And uh, do the same thing here. There we go. And that's on there nicely. All right. So we put this back in the holder. And so I have some side cutters here as well. And so now that we're done doing that, I'm just going to use the side cutter to uh, to cut off the 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 ends of the leads there, just so it's nice and clean. And there we go. We have uh, two um, two solder marks there, or two uh, perfectly good uh, soldered uh, legs. And you can see the cap is uh, perfectly connected, and there's no uh, there's no issues there. So that's really good. So we're going to continue the same thing here. I'm going to take another one of these uh, awesome um, awesome uh, caps with the legs, and we're going to stick it through. And again, uh, long leg is positive. I'm going to talk myself through this because, again, doing the video, you get distracted a little bit. So I'm just going to make sure that they're correct. And uh, there are the legs popping out again. So I'm just going to go ahead and just bend those over so it kind of holds it in place while I position everything. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the holder. I'm just, I'm just detangle my solder here. I just took a little bit too much out. And, of course, as I'm using it, it starts to move away there we go okay and the same thing i mean the cap is secure i'm just gonna go ahead and snip off the uh, snip off the leads just went back underneath there i don't need that uh, going there in case it causes a short and when i cut these i'm, I'm not going right to the board um, I'm, I'm just slightly higher than what it is. I mean, we have a lot of protection under here that um, prevent it from touching the chassis. So we're pretty good there. I don't think we need to do anything else there. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna clean up that last, uh, 
solder just a little bit, just because we put a little bit too much solder on there. So I'm just cleaning it up a little bit so it looks a little nicer. I mean, you'll never, I'll never have a factory, but uh, definitely try to do your best as you go. Okay, so they're all, um, they're all uh, off, cut off there nicely. I'm just going to take those and put them in the garbage just so I don't uh, accidentally leave them on the table and cause a, cause a short. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull out this last, um, pull this last uh, capacitor that we have here, and we're going to put this on the board as well. So again, um, we have one last one here. Positive is a long leg. Um, short leg is the negative, and that's indicative by the, the symbol as well uh, that we know is there. And what we talked about, the negative being against the card edge as well, which it is, which is the short leg. I'm just going to do the same thing again and bend the legs just to hold it into place while I position my uh, my stuff. Now, um, if the board was laying flat or, uh, I mean, there's different methods you can use to uh, to hold them in place. But, I mean, these are fairly straightforward to, uh, to hold themselves in place. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder this as well, finish this. Okay, now let's make sure that that's not going anywhere. No, nope, it looks pretty good. And that is pretty darn good. And there's absolutely no wobble at all to that capacitor, which is good news. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put this aside. One of the things I learn as I go is to clean up as I go. <laughs> um, just because I want to make sure that there's nothing in the, in the way here as I'm doing things. All right. So we're going to go ahead and snip off those uh, leads, um, just the last bit of leads here that we have. And again, just above the, the board there. Um, you don't need to go too close to the, to the PCB. You don't want to do any damage to the solder mask or to the, to the PCB itself. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. And I'm just going to snip this one down just a little bit further. I mean, it's, again, not a big deal. This one to make sure it looks decent. All right. And they all, uh, they're all in there really, really good. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we did some soldering work and stuff like that there. So I just want to make sure that we do a nice little isopropyl nice alcohol to clean off any sort of residue that was left behind from the, the solder flux and the resin that's there. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically, uh, that's basically it. So as you can see in the, um, in the picture, or sorry, in the video, um, you'll see the, the three, um, joints I made here, or three sets of joints. And on the other side, we have our uh, three caps um, that are freshly installed on the board. So I'm hoping that's uh, that'll be the fix that we require. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and uh, and do some cleaning of this board um, just to do a little bit of a cleanup. Okay, so now that we have that, um, I have different uh, various brushes that are available to me uh, for what we're doing. And just to show them, I mean, these are relatively inexpensive. You don't have to pay a lot of money for this sort of stuff and what you're trying to do. And so this allows you to, um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so everybody can really see what I'm doing to the board. But um, this allows you to, um, um, to clean the board off fairly quickly, uh, fairly easily, and uh, to make sure that there's no, um, there's no dirt left on the board. And I mean, dirt on the motherboard uh, can um, can um, can cause heat buildup on the on the board. I mean, mind you, this is quite old, so I mean, you can see all the, the dust that's on there. But that's okay. Um, if you're taking it all apart and you go through all the effort, it's good to um, just do a good cleanup. Now, there's different methods you can do, of course. Um, some people put a, a vacuum uh, very close to the board as I'm doing this. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an ESD safe uh, vacuum. I'm working on getting one um, for this for this project board uh, for the project area, just because. I mean, again, I, I plan on doing quite a bit of this over time, and I have quite a bit of inspiration. I've been um, uh, quite a novice when it comes to soldering, um, but I've been watching quite a bit of um, videos on soldering and desoldering and recommended tools and and all those good things. Um, I, I credit um, um, Necroware is uh, one 
uh, that uh, great uh, YouTuber that goes and does quite a bit of work here. Um, and also Tech Tangents, uh, Shelby from Tech Tangents. I've seen him quite do quite a bit and uh, has beautiful uh, tools that he uses, and he's been using them for many, many, many years. So uh, it's great to um, be inspired by um, you know doing this own work myself and uh, being able to recap you know a motherboard um, from from the nineties, which is really, really, really cool. And uh, yeah, this is great. What's the date code on this? Uh, nineteen ninety six. I had to ninety seven, so this might be a ninety six board as well. I'm um, just looking. Uh, S3 Trio 3D on board. So I believe that's the uh, the uh, AGP that we had talked about earlier, which is the um, S3 uh, Trio uh, AGP. So, I mean, not a super high class uh, video card for sure. Um, again, IBM, this particular system wasn't meant to be a gaming PC by any means, but definitely uh, good to know what's in that. And so the most of the dust used uh, it seemed to be around the processor, which makes sense because... Um, um, you know, the fan, uh, this particular uh, processor is passively cooled, so it doesn't have an active fan on it uh, that you plug in and power and it blows air. Um, there's a fan that's uh, in the chassis that's next to this that actually does that. So, okay, we've gone ahead and cleaned that up. So that's looking good. And uh, yeah, it looks good. So I didn't change in the dip switches. Everything looks good there. All right. Now, one of the things that, uh, let's get rid of some of this dust here as well, just to get out of the way. So one of the things that I um, like to do as well is um, spray a little bit of contact cleaner. I mean, the board is older, right? And um, so I like to spray a little bit of contact cleaner in here. Now, this is safe for electronics. Um, and the idea is that it just cl cleans out any sort of dirt and grime where the contacts would be uh, in, the, in the particular slots now. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and spray a little bit in here. And this, this dissipates really, really, really quickly as well. Um, and you can see it, anything I dropped is gone now. Um, but it's designed to, you know, to, to clean up and, and fix up any of these slots. Now, I, there were no issues with this that I could tell. Um, this was the issue back here uh, with the capacitors. But um, again, just taking precaution. It's already out. I'm doing it while I'm here. It cleans up all the contacts and uh, we're, we're good to go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just clean up the workspace and we'll be, um, next step will be to put the motherboard back in the computer. Okay, so it seems that we have the um, motherboard all ready to go. I have the chassis back up on the bench and we're just going to go ahead and um, take this uh, newly uh, fixed motherboard and cleaned up. I'm just going to slide it into those um, those uh, little grooves that I see here. And I'm not going to force anything on this. I'm just going to make sure that we have them lined up and uh, we're good to go. And that looks to be good. And I see that sliding in nicely there. And again, you're seeing it live as I am. So hopefully it, uh, we're going to be all good to go here. So, okay, I see that going in there. Now it seems to be in with there. I'm, I'm having some trouble up in this corner here. So I'm just going to make sure. There we go. That's in now. There it seems to be all clipped in there. And the same thing with this little guy here. I'm going to make sure that that's in there. It is. All right. That's good. And they seem to be making all the contacts. And one thing I didn't use the contact cleaner on is that. Uh, a card edge, but uh, hopefully we'll be pretty good there. So this is the fan. This is where the fan is located. This is what I was referring to earlier about why there's probably so much dust in this particular area. But it seems that I have that uh, it all cleaned up pretty good. So we're good on that. So I was going to double check everything because I remember I had mentioned earlier that we had the the board out, but it was um, it was really. I mean, I really had a lot of. <laughs> um, 
I, I had a lot of the uh, um, riser board removed as well. So I just want to make sure that that's all good. So we have our IDE um, cable that goes over to the CROM drive and the hard drives underneath this as well. Um, spare power cord here for expansion as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, plug in um, a couple of the cables that were here uh, just that we had unplugged earlier, um, which I could have arguably left them in place now in, in hindsight, but um, just makes it easier to work on the board if they're kind of out of the visual way. So again, I believe this is coming from, it is, uh, the back of the CD-ROM drive. So this is your audio. So when you put a CD in to play, uh, it doesn't natively just play, right? So it, it goes through this cable, um, this audio cable to the to the board. And this particular item, again, uh, hopefully this works. I mean, this is, I don't know if it's gone bad uh, over over time, but uh, this is the RFID, which would be more for inventory and things like that. But the way the computer is configured, uh, which I could not clear, which was what was causing the, all these issues, is that it was detecting it, not detecting it, detecting it, not detecting it. And I'm not going to you know, fight with that too much. So we're just going to go ahead and... Uh, pop it back in anyway to put it back in the in the system uh, for the sake of what we're trying to accomplish uh, now. And so um, I'm tempted, um, yeah, I'm just gonna put it all back together. I was gonna say, uh, fire it up, um, put some power into it first uh, before we put everything kind of back in here, but to remove the floppy drives, a screw. Um, so it's not even that, I'm not too big of a, big of a deal to do that. So I'm not too worried about it right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, the next thing we're going to do is pop the floppy drive back in. And so, again, that was pretty that was pretty straightforward to slide in. I mean, literally, that's that's all it is. I'm going to say that to everybody, and here we are. Um, there we go. Okay. So, um, yeah, it just slid in right there. And something is not... There we go. Okay. Oh, okay, I get I get what it does. It's just an adjustment. Okay. I just moved it when earlier when I was working on it. All right, let's go ahead and put that back in as well. Surprisingly, the screwdrivers on my bench haven't uh, run away. Okay, we're screwing that floppy drive back in. And, and remember, the floppy drive is what initially covered those capacitors, so I wasn't able to see that. Uh, originally, when I was doing my troubleshooting and trying to figure out what the heck was uh, what the heck was happening, all right, processor. So I am going to um, spray a little bit of contact cleaner on the edge of this, just because it probably hasn't been removed um, ever. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to clean up a little bit here as well, just because um, I, you know I don't want anything to happen to this, obviously, and uh, and a little bit of contact cleaner never hurt anything. Um, uh, when it, actually, it's funny because I I um, had a I had a, a video card in another system which I plan on doing a video on. And it's an early Pentium computer, and um, the video card is a had a two meg expansion in it, and the, the com complete computer was freezing, and there's no way I was getting it going anyway. So I I took the memory out of the actual video card and popped it back in, no problem. As soon as I did that. Uh, with the contact cleaner, uh, there were no issues at all, so it was nice to uh, nice to see that. There, nice and easy, slid right in nicely, and I, I believe that the contact cleaner would have added a little bit of lubrication there as well, which is nice. Um, and as the contacts rub together, like the little little edge of the edge of the um, card, so it's it nice to see that. So I mean, these look all fairly fairly good and clean, and I know they were working. Um, because I did have the system on and it didn't, it did a memory test as well. Um, and so these are labeled dim zero, one and two. So zero is your primary dim and then one and two. I'm going to put the two like, um, like chips, uh, together, um, just because that came with the actual computer. Um, I am the one who added the extra 128 megs of RAM. Uh, but again, for what we're doing today, um, I'm just going to go ahead and put these together because I just want to remain consistent um, as I go. Just because if I do end up troubleshooting, I can work backwards and uh, find out what potentially causing my grief um, as I'm going through it. So there we go. We've got that in there. That's all put together. Now the last thing is this uh, beautiful 
Uh, video card. Now, I am going to learn my lesson this time, and I'm going to take it out this time because I don't want to cause any damage to the card edge of this card, um, just where it's more proprietary, and I'm sure I could just take off the the um, plate off of another one of these uh, AGP, uh, earlier AGP cards, which I do have several video cards uh, in a bin. So I'm going to um, just inspect this again because I want to make sure there's absolutely no, no issues, and they're not. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this in. This where it's flat on, nice and easy. And again, like I mentioned earlier, if you have the force that you're doing it wrong. And so um, it's going to move this into frame and uh, go from there. So this is the this is the card here. Let's see if uh, I'm going to have any difficulty um, getting it in here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pop this uh, these screws back in to the plate just to put it back into position and. Uh, and again, where this is so proprietary, I'm just being a little extra care careful and cautious with it, just because I don't feel like um, I don't feel like having to search and replace and and uh, and, and try, I try to keep all these systems as original as possible. It's just you know good to go down memory lane and be able to try all different configurations with different pieces of software and things like that. So it's really really fun and fun to do that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in as well. This is the card. Um, uh, screw that holds us into place. And that's in there now. And we have that in there, nice and tight and secure. We have our memory back in. We have our motherboard latch, which is the ejection system for those boards, slides away, which is really, really neat now that I know how it operates. Um, you know, I could have edited that first part out. I could have YouTube did and see how other people did this back in the day and things like that. But why? Why? Yeah, that's... Uh, learn ourselves and uh, take you down that journey do that and we have our brand new caps in the board so i think we are good to go here oh no so i completely lied to you uh we have we have our um our um, back here to put back on so let's go ahead and just put that um i believe it goes this way uh we're going to do this together um there look at that and just nice and easy I'm going to put the two screws back in on the ends. And this will form the computer back up together uh, to be able to put the, the top cover back on uh, to the computer, which is, which is what we want to do. Sometimes you just got to move it back and forth just to get the screw to align and we're all good to go. All right. So, gone ahead and put that all back together. So we'll just flip it around. And so here we are. We're back where we originally started. <laughs> we have our, our motherboard, which has been cleaned up. We have our three caps, which we've replaced uh, under here. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're in a good place now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the cup cover back on the, um, the system. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and uh, put everything back together. Okay, so we've gone ahead and cleaned up the bench and have uh, reassembled the, the, the machine uh, outside of what you've seen. I put the cover back on the machine. I put the uh, Dell monitor on it, hooked up the keyboard and mouse, and hooked up the power. So let's go ahead and turn on the machine and hope nothing goes poof. Uh, you should know by the sound or the smoke or both <laughs> and uh, see if the machine will boot. No IBM personal computer 300 PL from 1996-97 based on the chipset that we see here. It's a good sign. We have the IBM logo coming up. Let's hit the uh, F1 for configuration setup. Let's see if we can get into the uh, setup application. Uh, the setup application for IBM would be the, uh, the BIOS. Um, it's where you can go in and do all the configuration and changes to the system. Now, right about now is where I would receive the security saying the computer um, has been, there's been an intrusion alarm set that the keyboard is now locked and you wouldn't be able to go. Oh, here we go. We're into the setup. That's a great sign. So it seems that the issue uh, by replacing the capacitors um, on the motherboard next to the, uh, the, the memory, 
or sorry, the CMOS battery uh, with the capacitors made made all the difference. That was correct. So um, no damage. Everything everything seems to be working great. Everything went back in together um, and uh, booted its uh, first try. So let's click on the system summary. So this is a Pentium 3, yep, 600 megahertz processor, um, 256 megabytes of RAM. It's being picked up. The video controller is an S3 uh, Inc. Savage 4 video controller. Um, Ethernet is enabled. Uh, 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. Sorry, floppy drive, not CD-ROM drive. The hard drive is a 10 gigabyte hard drive. And um, it's detecting the CD-ROM installed. It's uh, good news. And a whole bunch of product information. Actually, let's see. Um, the BIOS seems to be updated up to 2001, which is um, pretty good. Uh, devices and I.O. ports. So you can go in here and configure your uh, serial port, USB support uh, on the back of the machine, your parallel support, so that's your, that's your um, printer, your video setup, IDE drives, uh, etc. So here I can actually um, change some of the memory options uh, for the card, uh, sorry, uh, the aperture here. Uh, it, there's an eight, there's eight, um, eight megabytes of uh, RAM on this particular video card. Um, IDE drive, so just uh, you can go ahead and configure your, your CD-ROM drive, your hard drive, if you want to put another one in there, etc. cetera. Um, thing is, this is not very expandable outside of the a couple bays. The bay underneath here is actually for the, uh, the hard drive memory. So outside of just upgrading the system and putting a different uh, drive in or taking the CD-ROM drive all together and uh, changing up the hard drive, etc. So audio uh, enabled, uh, Ethernet is enabled, and the network boot um showing disabled that's good okay um so uh system security this is where we were having problems before and it shows that uh it's good now it's all disabled that's great um again when i turned this on before and the odd opportunity i had to get into this configuration change i was able to go in and click on disable but it wouldn't save and um it, it was just a challenge because every time i started the computer up I was super lucky if I even got into this configuration, and if I did, um, I, I couldn't do a whole lot. I mean, it was just it was just acting really wonky, which which you know made me go down a rabbit hole because hey, the symptoms didn't um, didn't mirror what the what the cause was, at least in my mind. So I did I did go to um, the good old Google and, and do a lot of research and, and found out from a lot of user groups that on this particular machine it was the the capacitor. That's just really really. Uh, Crazy to think. Okay, let's go ahead and exit the setup and uh, boot into Windows. Let's see what uh, what Windows that uh, we have installed on this machine. Oh, it looks like Windows 2000. Uh, yeah, Windows 2000. Wow. Um, so again, I haven't fired this machine up in years. Um, yeah, Windows 2000 Professional. Haven't fired this, up this uh, system in years. I, I like I said, I. I Took it out. Uh, actually, I remember buying it at an auction um, for I don't know ten dollars or something like that, and it came with a bunch of software and a whole bunch of peripherals and stuff like that for ten bucks. Um, anyway, so I, I took the took the system home and um, fired it up, and I said, "Hey, okay, well, what can we do?" And, and again, at the time, it, it worked just fine. I mean, I, yeah, I wiped the drive and and uh, installed. Well, apparently, installed Windows two thousand. I, I don't remember doing that, but. Uh, it's here, so it's good. So it's firing up uh, Windows 2000. And so Windows 2000 uh, came out uh, around the same time as Windows Millennium Edition. For anybody um, who remembers the, those days, uh, we will be doing videos on both operating systems uh, on this channel. Oh. So Windows 2000 startup. And uh, it was a predecessor to Windows uh, XP. So... Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, at this time when his 98 second edition was still pretty strong um, in the market. Um, and because uh, people were upgrading to Windows Millennium Edition, and, and, and I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because a lot of people have different uh, feelings about the, um, the software and the operating system. But uh, they downgraded back to Windows SE, and then this Windows 2000 was really geared uh, towards the, the business market where it would be. Um, you know, schools and, and offices and things like that um, because of the robust um, environment in, in which it operated in and uh, the reliability and, and what have you. So it was, it was, it was, uh, Windows 1000 was a loved operating system. 
uh, along with Windows 98 SE, uh, which was held on for quite a while, up until uh, Windows XP, which really merged the two operating systems and environments together. Um, anyway, that's a whole other conversation for another day, but uh, for the sake of today, we have Windows 2000 installed on here. Um, it's really cool to see, um, you know, again, it's kind of memory lane for myself because I had done a clean install and it seems I installed a couple of games on here uh, just to test out what the computer could do. Um, some Star Wars, um, Motocross Madness, Monster Crop, Ma Cross Madness, MP3s. Um, yeah, it's indicating the network is unplugged, which it, I don't have a network uh, cable hooked up into it. Uh, the system time uh, did, excuse me, did stay. Uh, this was something I had set up um, previously um, when the computer was going on, going off, going on, going off, and I wasn't able to stay in it long enough to to do much. But it did. It seems to have kept the um, the uh, time. Um, now, mind you, I'm going to change the time zone. To I changed sorry, change the time zone when I did that. Uh, there we go. We have the right time now. Okay, um, let's click on the start menu here. Go to accessories. Let's see what's in here. So we have um, you know a lot of. Uh, different um, applications I would have installed at the time. Um, uh, goodness, net meeting. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, entertainment, CD player, sound recorder, Windows Media Player, um, you know, standard uh, Windows games, FreeCell, Minesweeper, Pinball, um, Solitaire. And again, a lot of this would have been um, just on the system uh, when I installed it. I just would have chosen the full install. Uh, apparently, I have a bunch of casino games installed, um, Star Wars game, um, Microsoft Golf, and a couple of uh, other Microsoft games as well. And I'm not sure why. I mean, usually uh, I install quite a bit more software, so I don't know if I was having problems with the uh, computer or not. Um, but yeah, no, it, it seems to be installed pretty good. Um, it's just really cool to walk through this uh, in uh, 2023, running Windows 2000 on a computer that was just not functioning, not working, and you saw it on this on this video. We took the uh, took the motherboard out of the computer. We were on the uh, kept on saying it. We were on the journey together. I didn't uh, didn't know much about taking this computer apart. Um, hopefully, because I'm no expert in this by any means, um, but definitely I enjoy doing it. And we took it back together. We were able to uh, find the, the three capacitors that were causing problems. Now, were all three bad? Not sure. But three were in the same area. One showed uh, bad uh, visibility that there was um, some, um, uh, some stuff going on with it. And then the other one, of course, uh, was a little bit uh, lifted. And really, they should be completely flat um, as opposed to a, like a, a dome on it. So, um, yeah. So we were able to go through that together. I, in this video and, and um, take them off uh, out of the motherboard, clean up the motherboard and put new ones on, solder new ones on and put it all back together. And here we are, a working system um, from um, 1996, 97, uh, based on the chipset. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Um, and I was just going to check in here to see uh, just, I, I tend to, um, I tend to install my dot matrix. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> the Epson FX 1050 is installed on this. So I must've been printing some banners uh, on this computer. Now, if you haven't uh, seen that video, I did do a video on the Epson FX 1050 uh, dot matrix printer. It's out of the camera range right now, but it's sitting over here on the left side. Um, but that was a really cool video. And again, if you want to see me print more on that, just leave a comment below and I'm happy to do so. Okay, we're going to close that. So um, yeah, I mean, let's uh, let's just double click Monster Truck Madness here and see what uh, see what madness we can get into here real quickly. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to turn the sound just down a little bit. It's okay to have sound, but I just want to make sure everybody can still hear me and all that good stuff. All right. I'm not going to do anything fancy. We're just going to go ahead and uh, hit play. Nothing crazy. Let's choose our truck. Uh, Wildfoot. Outsiders. Oh, look at that. There we go. We're an outsider. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go. And loading up. Let's just uh, yeah. Let's play a little bit of monster. Uh, Anna, monster truck go. madness. Go. Oh, I do not even. <laughs> the horn. <laughs> Oh. 
Apparently I can take anything out as I go. This goes a power pole. There we go. I'm not doing very well apparently, but that's uh, totally fine. Just here to have a little fun on the uh, IBM Personal Computer 300 PL that we uh, we repaired together. <laughs> All right, we can. Uh, you can see that the computer is working great. Running Windows 2000. The outsider is looking for a detour. <laughs> I think they're referring to me. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, get out of that. Just, uh, just to show everyone, just uh, see how it's working. It seems to be working just great. It's really cool to see how oh, oh, the sound. And this is coming on from the onboard uh, sound uh, speaker, um, IBM's. Um, quite a bit came with those uh, speakers outside of just a regular system speaker you'd have. Um, so it's great. I don't have any speakers hooked up. Uh, I could have, uh, I didn't, uh, for the sake of turning this back on. So I wanted to test it to make sure we weren't going to have a bunch of smoke coming out or an explosion or anything. And, uh, yeah, it seems to be working really, really well. And I'm very happy to, um, to have resurrected this, uh, this computer back from, um, when, you know, it could have ended up in a landfill or e-waste. Um, you know, the computer just wasn't wasn't acting normally at all and i'm so happy we were able to do that so uh if you like today's video and you want to see more repair videos like this uh i have quite a bit of um, older hardware that that uh, requires some tlc if you like that uh, give this video a thumbs up um and uh, leave a comment below and let me know um what sort of things uh, you liked about this video um in terms of um in, in, you know a little different than doing a uh, introduction of hardware or you know um, um doing different uh, different reviews on different things uh, we took the computer right apart and uh, did some um, electrical work on the um, uh, on the repair work on the board um, if you like that again leave a comment and let me know um, really appreciate it if you like and subscribe and share uh, the channel um, and uh, hit the bell uh, in notification uh, button as well uh, that'll allow us to um, uh, let you know when uh, when new videos are released such as this and uh, again, I really appreciate you hanging out with me uh, during this entire repair video. It was really exciting for me to do this and share this with everybody. Um, and uh, I really hope to, um, to bring you more videos such as this. So uh, without ending further, I hope everyone has a wonderful day, night, whenever you're watching this. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.